Next Magazine. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you, Professor Viad, for, uh, for that and for the ICI for uh, letting us hold this panel here. I think you guys are going to find it very interesting. Now, I'm going to ask our panelists for a very brief introduction in a minute, um, but before we get to that, for some people who don't know, what's, this is a recipe, some recipes for Italy, and maybe you don't know why, but uh, here's, here's some, some economic information about Italy that you may not be aware of. Uh, it's in tough economic times, and it's not just because of the Euro crisis, which started a couple of years ago. Here's some statistics to know about. The GDP in Italy is down 8% since 2007. It'll probably be down another 2% this year, and there's 12% unemployment. So with technology being an important jobs creator in the United States, um, we want to talk about how it might do the same thing for Italy, um, where unemployment is much higher, and where, in fact, the average Italian or the average standard of living is, is down from 10 years ago, which is kind of it's pretty unusual for a modern uh, country, a developed country. So, I'm going to ask our panelists for a brief intro, and uh, we'll just start from my right with Maurizio, and just give us a couple of minutes, tell us tell us about what you do, and uh, uh, and then we can just go right down the line. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I have uh, the, uh, the uh, privilege and the honor of having been uh, an entrepreneur and with a startup in Italy and also in the United States. So my career, in fact, started um, after I came to the United States with the Fulbright Fellowship and I won, uh, that I won while I was uh, graduated after my uh, electronic engineering degree in Italy. I came to the States at Brown University for my PhD and then uh, I went back to Italy and uh, worked for a startup in uh, Florence doing solar cells, solar energy. I came back to the States and I worked for IBM for about 15 years uh, at the research lab at Thomas Watson Research Center. And then um, I uh, was involved with basically chip design for computers and, uh, and other things. Um, and then I was lucky enough to uh, participate in a startup in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It was a spin-off of MIT. Uh, that we did uh, digital cameras, so very thin digital cameras. The company was called Small Camera Technologies. But we did three rounds of financing and then we sold the company to a company in California, Cyber Semiconductor. So I was the CEO of the company and we had uh, quite, quite a ride with that. It was in the early 2000s. And then I came to New York. I've been in New York now for eight years and I've been continuing um, with startups. I've been now participating in two startup spin offs of Columbia University. And I'm also working very closely with Professor Gottsman at the Technical Cornell Innovation Institute for helping from an entrepreneur to build something. Maria? Yes, uh, hi everybody, thank you so much for coming here. I see many friends and I'm very grateful you uh, took the time to come here. Um, I'm a journalist, I specialize in uh, business and technology. Um, I've been uh, working, I've been writing for Il Corriere della Sera since uh, 94. In 2000, I moved uh, to New York City with my husband and colleague, uh, Doc Maggi. Uh, and uh, uh, because I specialize in uh, technology, I met uh, Alessandro Piol, and together one year ago, we uh, decided that uh, uh, this topic, uh, the tech startups in New York, was a really hot one, very interesting, exciting, and also very useful um, because of uh, everything said. Uh, said earlier uh, as comparison with uh, the Italian model uh, and so on. So here I am and uh, uh, I give the floor to Alessandro. Uh, hi, uh, thank you again for coming. Uh, I'm Alessandro Pio. Uh, I'm a um, transplanted Italian. I've been here for, for a long time. I came as a teenager, so actually next year is going to be 40 years in the US. Uh, most of the time uh, in the uh, New York area, a couple of years in Boston. Uh, I've been in venture capital for the past uh, 20 years. I started by, uh, um, when I was at at and I co-founded uh, the venture capital arm of at and at the time, at and Ventures. And then I went to a larger firm in uh, New York City, and then uh, six years ago we left uh, uh, to start our own firm called Adanta Capital. And now I'm in the process of you know, launching the fund in the, uh, some of the uh, uh, big data areas and uh, enterprise software areas. Um, my background is an engineer. Uh, I went to Columbia University um, and uh, in computer science. I worked as a programmer for a few years before uh, going to business school and becoming a businessman, I guess. And um, <coughs> um, last year, as I said, we decided to get together. And it, for me, it was a, almost a, 
a work of love to, uh, to try to tell the story of, uh, of uh, New York City, what has happened in the past 20 years. Uh, I remember that 20 years ago, most of us, the few venture companies in New York who spent their time on the plane going back and forth to California, and then things progressively improved uh, to the point that today there is enough to do here that uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to travel. So that's a nutshell of my background, and uh, I'll leave it to call out to you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you to the uh, Italian Cultural Institute for hosting us this evening. Uh, I work in the Mayor's Office for International Affairs, and the role of our agency is to be the liaison between the diplomatic uh, community here in New York City and the city administration. Uh, New York City actually has the largest diplomatic community of any city in the world uh, because of the United Nations, the missions to the UN, and the consulates. My role within the larger agency is in the Division for International Business, and what we do is we work mostly with the trade commissioners who are stationed at the, the consulates here in New York, uh, on business attraction, bringing foreign companies here to New York, and to um, promote New York as a place to do business as, and as a center for business. Uh, there are a number of services that we offer to, to companies. We do things like, for example, the ones that are looking for um, uh, legal referrals or legal assistance. We have an agreement with the Bar Association, so we help them connect with attorneys to the Bar Association. If uh, companies are looking for real estate, uh, we help them find uh, uh, places to, to start their business. Here in New York, increasingly, that's that's easier than it was in the past, simply because of the number of co-working spaces and incubator spaces that have opened over the past few years. We also work with the local trade associations and industry associations to help people get networked around. Um, businesses that are regulated by the city, we act as a sort of um, guide to the city regulations. In the tech business, that's really not much of an issue because um, there are very few regulations at the city level. But for businesses such as restaurants or things like that, which are heavily regulated, we help people understand. So our role is to be a, a voice for, of the city um, and to interact with the uh, companies that are coming here through the diplomatic channels. Craig? Good evening. So my name is Craig Botsman. I'm Israeli, despite the accent. Okay. The, I'm the professor of computer science at Technion, the Israel Institute of Technology, and currently I'm directing the Technion Cornell Innovation Institute here in New York City. Um, <clears throat> the institute is, is a very important component in the Apple Works plan to turn New York City into the high-tech capital of the world, uh, second to none, of course. Uh, the, the campus itself is a graduate school, so basically we're, we're uh, training engineers. Not only are we training engineers, we're training entrepreneurs. The realization being that in order to grow the tech community here in New York City, the tech sector in New York City, it's not enough to produce good engineers to fill in the slots in Google and Microsoft and Facebook and other big companies to create new jobs on top of that. And create new jobs means create new companies. To create new companies, you need entrepreneurs to actually spin up and start up and do that type of thing. And that's what our campus is out to do. So every student which comes in is uh, trained not only in technology, but also in entrepreneurship. That's a very important distinction. Uh, I was involved in, in writing the proposal uh, together with Cornell that eventually uh, one of us built it from New York City. And I've been in town for about six months now permanently and uh, 